Silver Nielsen was perturbed. In just two years he would be 100, yet in all his decades of racing, he had never won a single title. He, as well as everyone else, knew that it was because the Night Thunder simply wasn't up to par with modern F-Zero vehicles, but pride and his devotion to his deceased friend Goldhand had kept him on the flying death trap. But after winning more than TWO MILLION SPACE CREDITS by betting on the mysterious Famicom, who was totally not Captain Falcon, he now had the funds to build a top-of-the-line machine that could truly exercise his tremendous skill as a racer. But would victory with such a machine be worth it if it meant betraying audience expectations? Silver wasn't sure at first, but Black Shadow and Princia Ramode's victories in the Sapphire and Emerald Cups and decidedly out-of-character custom machines inspired him to make up his mind. The legendary Diamond Cup was coming up next, and by golly, Silver was going to show everyone what he could really do. Welcome back to F-Zero GX. Today, we are separating the men from the boys right here. Diamond Cup, Master Class, let's do it. The Diamond Cup is unlocked after beating the other three cups on standard difficulty. And as you can probably tell from the preview of the first course, the Diamond Cup is, is, it loves killing you. I mean, there aren't even any guardrails for 90% of all of the courses, in fact. For this reason, we are using the most broken, overpowered custom machine in the game. It's called the Frost Lynx G4. And um, ask any world record site, they will tell you that this, th this is one of the best. And it's mostly due to the, to the booster. Because, just look at this acceleration, I am flying past all of the other racers right here. Now, normally I wouldn't use a machine that makes the courses look far easier than they actually are. Because, you know, I want to demo the actual difficulty of this. But, uh, the Diamond Cup really frustrates me. Uh, just going by this first course, Cosmo Terminal, it's a really pointless course if you ask me, because why make an entirely new setting when, you, you know, I'm still miffed that they didn't include White Land in, in GX, but, but I suppose, yeah, I don't even like this song either, but, um, the thing about Cosmo Terminal is that it splits into three paths a lot, as you have seen so far. And um, aside from this section right here, there are almost no guardrails, so it's very easy to fall off if you try to attack the other racers. That's that's probably going to get you killed. But now, as to which path you should take on each of the three laps, I generally just take the middle path on all of them. Now, I want to play this as safe as I can. That's why I'm boosting like a madman and risking falling off. <laughs> Here the paths overlap each other, so you could actually switch to a different path. There's a lot of strategy that could go into that. If I didn't have that tendency to fall off all the time, you could see that I'm using the infinite life cheat. But on this run, miraculously, I only needed it on the third course. So, and uh, so that means, <laughs> and somebody just fell off there. That's funny. It's always funny when somebody just vanishes off the face of them. Now look at the guy who's in second right now. It, it's What's interesting about him is that guy is named Don Genie, and he up pilots a machine called the Fat Shark, which out of all of the non-custom machines is the most broken in the game. It's, it's hilariously fast, and it's really hard to destroy, so if he winds up as your rival, you're in tough shit, I guess. But what's really weird about him is how his AI behaves in this particular race. And uh, uh, you can see that the on the minimap there, the calm marker is marks the position of either the guy in first, or if you're in first, the guy in second. And look, he's catching up to me right here. Like I finished first, but it, it's actually really hilarious what happens. Are we almost at the finish line right now? Yeah, here he comes. Now, I probably could have taken a risk and destroyed him, but... Uh, I didn't feel like it. Now, you see that little marker for third place off to the right there? How far behind do you think the Fat Shark and the third place finisher are? No, seriously, it's hilarious. Look at this. 
they're still racing and they're still like switching positions. Wow, we must have gone really fast there. There's people still running the race. Jeez, there was an 11 second difference between the Fat Shark and the Iron Tiger. How do you like that? Well, we came in first and that's going to... to uh, not affect very much because there's only a 7 point difference between first and second. Next up is another Sand Ocean, which I like because it's Sand Ocean, but... Lateral Shift is a very, very annoying course because, yet again, there are very little guardrails. Now, for those of you who watched the F-Zero Versus video for, from a while back, I said that the Sand Ocean course in that ROM hack we were playing was based off of Caterpillar from GP Legend. I was actually incorrect. It's actually based off this, but since, you know, it's a 3D course being implemented into a 2D game, I didn't really catch on to that. And we start off with sound glitches, apparently. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Still funny. Now, you'll notice that there are signs pointing me in the direction I'm supposed to turn. If you don't turn quick enough, you will fall right off the course because there is no guardrail beneath the sign. And I think this part of the course is annoying. Well, at least the pit areas are frequent. But uh, here we have an area with no guardrails, and the path is actually going to shrink a couple of times, right around here, yes. There's one. There's another one. Now you think on now you think it's not really that much of a threat on the first lap when they don't have when we don't have boosts and the acceleration of my broken machine is going to put me in first place. Well, now all the computers get their chance to catch up, and staying ahead of them when I have no guardrails to save me from accidentally falling off, that's going to get annoying. And you see right there, I actually... What happened there was, I fell off the course for a brief moment, but came immediately back onto the course. Now, if that happens, for whatever reason, this is a, this is a physics bug, by the way, if you fall off the course and immediately come back on before you, before you start decreasing in, in um, vertical height, before you start falling basically, you will get a little speed boost. And um, if you want like a professional demonstration of using this glitch to your advantage, I recommend looking up the speedrun, the world record speedrun of Cosmo Terminal. Because no way could I do that sort of thing. I'm not ballsy enough for that. Yeah, but for, for whatever reason, the Fat Shark lost its um, AI behavior. I have no idea why that happened. Why it was so good in the previous race, but now it's kind of eh. Because it's now a much smaller machine is in first place here. I should catch up to him, though. No, I'm not going to catch up to him. Looks like we're getting second place this time. There goes my perfect 500. No, I would never attempt a perfect 500 in this game. What do you take me for? But still... Should be good to go. 40 point difference between me and second place. Next up is... Oh no, another fire field. Oh yeah. This is actually a... But, you know, like with the previous Firefield course, I like this one a lot. It doesn't it doesn't kill you quite as often as Sand Ocean and Cosmo Terminal did, but... But, you know, there's a couple of annoying spots on this course. Like, including this one big jump, which you just saw in the preview, but... We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Shame there's no blue fire on this course, though. That looked really cool. And I really need to call attention to my mach my machine's acceleration here. Look at that. I'm cruising at 1100. Now, um, I just jumped over some pieces of scenery there. You can, in fact, hit them, so avoid touching them when you go off that jump. 
In fact, I'd probably avoid jumps on the first lap at all, if possible. Like, if you're using a not-broken machine here. Here's another jump plate. And, uh, it's very important that you hit that because the floor beneath the jump plate is really bumpy. There's a lot of bumps, and those make it very easy to lose control. So, it's semi-annoying, but not really that big of a threat. Still, careful. Big jump, and don't boost over the bumpy parts. That's not something you want to do. And coming up right here is... Yes, this, this fall. Now, this fall is really weird because when you... Because, you know, when I was doing it here, it looks pretty normal-ish. But... When you play that with another machine, it can kind of look like you're sort of being pushed, like, directly downward. You're falling straight down. Instead of, like, flying off of the fall. It's strange. Like, I have no idea what's going on there. Maybe it's a special physics thing that only this course has. Which would be very weird. Oh, but look at the computers, though. Ten of them have died so far. Yeah, that's a better demonstration of what I was uh, talking about before. So, you don't want to nosedive on that fall like you normally would. Normally, you don't want to stay in the air very long, but you're okay there. And I'm making these look ridiculously easy. But, again, that's only because my machine is overpowered. Turns pretty nicely. And I think we're pretty much set for the rest of the Grand Prix. Sorry to be very anticlimactic about this, but... You know, we're like 80 points ahead of second place. I don't think we're going... I don't think they're going to catch up. Next up is a second Aeropolis course. And that's good, because I... I like this course. First of all, it's Aeropolis. And, uh... It's pretty nicely designed. Like, it won't kill you as often as the previous three courses, but I suppose that's because they wanted to sort of breathe their level before the big finish. And what a big finish it is. But that will have to wait until later. Here we have these weird slopes, with pit areas on the sides, or in this case a dash plate. And here's why they call it Dragon Slope. You can see that there are two mid-air platforms with dash plates on them. You want to land on those, obviously, because it's faster than if you land on the bottommost uh, path. Pretty, dif pretty difficult to hit the topmost platform in most cases, and here we have Ooh, here we have ice and dirt that actually matters because there's no guardrail there, but it's per a pretty wide open space. So you're not in much danger there unless the computers get, uh, get aggressive, which they won't. This path is pretty narrow. So you might wind up bouncing around a little bit there. After that is a pretty normal path on, my on our way to the finish line. Oh, look at how far back the rival is. I'm certain this would have been a challenge if I had actually used, like, uh, a slightly less powerful machine. Maybe I should go back and use one. Nah! I had enough trouble with this trying to complete it with the worst out of all of the default machines. And if you're curious about that, I'm pretty sure the worst out of the non-custom machines is this this little the guy called the Silver Rat. Uh, he's ridiculously slow, he doesn't take much damage, and, well, it doesn't take much damage, and, and I tried beating the Master Diamond Cup with it, it was, it didn't end well. I didn't even get to the final course. 
That's what I would have needed infinite lives for. I'm sorry, is someone ahead of me? Well, not anymore. Ah, come on. Come on, fat shark. You can catch up. I hope you can catch up. Now he's not going to catch up. Oh, he might have a shot here if I keep bouncing around the walls, but now we're almost to the finish line, and I'm... That was way too big a risk. I should not have boosted like that. But there's the finish line. And I think we have a guaranteed first place finish, so that's rather anticlimactic of me to do this. Yeah, let's see. Let's see, last place gets 15 points, I think. First place gets 100, so an 85 point difference will guarantee you that you stay in first. Of course, we, ha we have to actually survive the final course, however, and, well, I have infinite lives, but if you were playing this normally, this wouldn't be a fun course to play. It's called Phantom Road. Uh, a bit of a shout-out out to Rainbow Road yet again, but this is like Rainbow Road from hell. At least it has guardrails, though. That's, that's a point in its favor. And one of the most epic final course themes in, in any racing game I've played. This is really good for a big finish. It's better than Big Hand, though, that's for sure. There's a path split here. And there's this really annoying bump in the center of the road. Now, here's why this course is so finished. We see ice here, and there's a pit area. That pit area actually leads into a, into a bottomless pit, and so does that one. It leads into a hole, if you will. And there's pit areas on the sides here that also lead into holes, so you gotta line yourself up in the middle of the course to avoid that. Very fiendish course design. That actually blew somebody up finally. That took long took me long enough to do that. You know, I'm sure this would be more exciting if I actually had to do well. So, I apologize for that. <laughs> Did I just see a couple of people fall off completely? Whoa, they're really flying! Let's see if I can destroy the rival car, just for kicks. I mean, this is really an unnecessary risk, but I might as well. Did I get him? I think I got him. Yeah, I probably got him. Or not. There he is. Unless it's somebody else. I'm surprised the computer didn't decide to cheat here. This is usually one of their prime cheating locales. Ah, well, he's going to finish ahead of me. Dead last out of everybody that survived, but that's probably enough. Uh, yep, that's a win for us. Oh. Did it just save right there? I don't know why it needed to save. Huh. Normally it saves when you win a lot with like one of the regular machines, but custom vehicles doesn't usually do that. Who knows why it needs to save right there. Oh, look at that max speed. Isn't that beautiful? 
Oh, that that max speed, not so much. That's more like it. Oh, that was the lowest max speed out of all of the races. Not a course that I like. I don't like Phantom Road at all. I wonder if Phantom Road will come back to haunt me in the next race video. Oh, look at him. Look at him. 